we are on hello everyone I'm Michael Lloyd big boy variety here and um, we're here to discuss about that NCAA tournament and about those bubble teams um, first let me get it right off the bat to start the Longhorns are in baby they are in I'm glad for our team um, we had an up and down season but we got in and that's what matters is we got in the big dance once again and um, you know um, uh, we played one of the toughest schedules in the country ESPN said it was the second best in the country behind North Carolina so um, we took on some tough tough competition you know during the regular season um, as far as Arizona State and Oklahoma are concerned, um, those big wins, they count. Y'all need to calm down. I mean, even though Oklahoma probably doesn't deserve it, nor does Arizona State, they're, they're, they're in. They, they have the whole body of work that is there. And it's all there for you um, to wrap your head around those big wins that Arizona State had in the beginning of the season. They were all key to their tournament hopes now um so look back at my notes here Let's see. Uh, i think it's because of the good run that bama had in the sec tournament um beating the number one seed auburn i think they were the number one i don't remember i really wasn't paying attention to the tournaments but um what they did in the sec tournament really put them in and as far as you know why the the other reason why they're in you know oh people are whining about them having 15 losses and um it's a similar situation to um vanderbilt from either last year or a couple of years ago when they had 15 losses i mean they're a good team they're in um now as far as who's out um only be it be started on St. Mary's and Middle Tennessee State. They did not play anybody. Um, all St. Mary's did was beat Gonzaga. That was it. They didn't do anything else to um, put themselves on the map. Um, because apparently they didn't even go anywhere. They didn't even go out the side of the state of California um, for most of the season. And Middle Tennessee, when they had... Um, and they had the opportunities to get the victories that they needed. Uh, they didn't get them. And, what, and when those easy wins came around, especially against a team like Southern Miss, you know, I go to UNT and I wasn't expecting um, anything. I'm glad that, I'm glad that whoever, whoever's on the basketball team, they need to, need to pat themselves in the back because, um, yeah, I knew they weren't going to go very far. Freaking North Texas, man. Basketball school, anyway. Football school is a different story this year. It was a different story, but that's that's off topic. Let's keep going. Um, oh yeah, Middle Tennessee State when they lost to um, apparently they lost to Southern Miss early in the CUSA tournament, and they did not they did not do a good job um, with that. Now um, as far as the whole thing about Baylor goes, now that was kind of a snub. I think that our conference should have gotten at least eight teams in. Um, it would have came down to either Baylor or Oklahoma State, honestly. I would have rather had, um, I don't know, I'm, honestly. I'd, I'd have the both in, but we'll talk about Oklahoma State in a minute. Uh, but Baylor, apparently they had the number four SOS strength of schedule, according to ESPN anyway. And when they played big teams like Wichita State and Xavier, they took L's. And when I looked at their schedule, they played black schools. They played black schools. The HBCUs, um, that's not going to cut it at all. The HBCUs have the two worst conferences in the country, so... So you, you you can't you can't build a resume off of those types of games in the non-conference. You know, good for them for getting as far as they did. Baylor, 
but um yeah that that that's not gonna cut it as far as Oklahoma State goes people who were replying to me and uh, on other videos they said it was pretty much the exact same thing that their that Oklahoma State's non-conference schedule was just downright terrible and yeah, that's about us I mean they had good wins they beat Oklahoma in the tournament they, I think they swept Kansas that doesn't mean anything because Kansas won uh, both the tournament and the regular season title again anyway so you know that's that's all good um, USC that is an interesting one because um, Arizona State and even though Arizona State didn't finish very good in the Pac-12 USC went pretty far but um, as far as um, you know the teams that actually made it for the Pac-12 into the tournament um, they didn't beat those teams and when they did beat some teams it, it wasn't the type of teams that you want to that, that, that's not good enough um, team uh, um, USC they did beat um, Middle Tennessee but they're not in they also beat um, Mexico State but that doesn't really count either so I mean that's that's fine let's see oh yeah Notre Dame I almost forgot about Notre Dame Notre Dame had some bad losses some really bad losses and um, Indiana just isn't the same Indiana anymore we don't nobody really talks about them as one of those big schools anymore they, that, that eats up the limelight every year so and they also lost to Ball State the stunning upset those were supposed to be quote unquote quadrant three losses I, I still don't know about the whole quadrants thing but you know Notre um, Dame just didn't do enough and that's just the way the cookies going to crumble with them um Louisville and Marquette. I'm going to lump those two together. Louisville had a bunch of opportunities, and they didn't capitalize. Same with Marquette. They had a bunch of opportunities against good teams, and they didn't capitalize in these um, quote-unquote quadrant one and quadrant two victories and whatnot. Um, I think for Louisville, they went like 5-13 and 13 against um, quadrant one and two teams, so... And, I mean, keep in mind, I don't really know anything about the whole quadrants thing. Um, I think it's supposed to be a, a combination of a bunch of um, rankings and analytics and stuff like that. But, um, about that. And, let's see. Oh yeah, Nebraska. Another interesting case. Which is, kind of, they're kind of in the same boat. That they didn't really beat anybody. All they did was beat Michigan. And that was it. All the other teams in the tournament. From the Big Ten. They didn't beat. They didn't beat Ohio State. They didn't beat Purdue. They didn't beat uh, Michigan State either. And. I think they only played them for um, one time. And that was that. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, somebody had said something about St. Bonaventure being on the bubble, I'm not sure why. Um, they they were a safe bet to be in. Somebody had said that on Twitter or something, but they were a safe bet to be in. They had a good resume and everything, you know. Um, um, let me just get some personal biases out the way, <laughs> honestly. The ACC had too many teams in, and I have no idea why Syracuse is in. They're just there. Um, I don't think Notre Dame would have gotten in anyway. Those two losses were just too bad, and some of those losses that they had were just too bad. Um, my best bet would have been St. Mary's getting in, but you know, people are wrong. We're all wrong. I didn't even know who all was going to get in aside from those automatic bids and maybe um, maybe a 
bunch of at large from the um, the big six or seven conferences. Other than that, you know, I mean, it, it just was a, um, it was pretty interesting. Uh, the easiest bracket, I think, is the one with Villanova or Virginia. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I think Virginia has a little bit of a tougher road, but, you know, um, I, I forgot already who who's in whose brackets but you know you can see my reactions to those uh, on the channel and uh, that's about it here can't think of anything else got the light on guess I'll go play some NCAA do some surveys for a gift card or something hopefully do something to this hair this hair is glorious but it needs to needs to do something so I'm gonna head on out. Peace.